you've got pattern paper, I've got a card to share with you today that puts your pattern paper scraps or just sheets to use. Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and my studio. Today I'm sharing a brand new die set that I created that I thought would be perfect for using with pattern paper. We all have pattern paper, we all have holiday pattern paper, and today I'm going to show you a fun, clean and simple design that would be so fun to mass produce. But even if you don't have the dies that I'm using, you can use a pair of scissors and cut out your own little wonky tree. It'll all make sense, so stick around. That card project, well, there's two, there's three things coming up next. So here's a look at the products I'm going to be creating with today. And this is a new die set that I created called Wonky, Wonky Tree O. Get it? It's a trio, a tree O. But um bump. Thank you. But I sketched little trees, right? I just made three wonky trees. There is a like a what is that called? A trunk. <laughs> like funky modern trunk. And I think these little guys are gonna be perfect for cards and tags for the holidays, especially if you have packs of pattern paper that are laying around that you think, well, I, I don't, what should I do with it? Cut some trees. So that's what we're gonna to do today. This is actually a new paper pack that I got from Lawn Fawn and it's called Favorite Flannel. And I think it's just adorable, very, very clean and simple design. And then I'm gonna use a greeting from Holiday Typewriter. This came out in our last release and I know that this is going to be one of my most used sets for the holiday season. So I actually knew I had these already designed and I tried to squeeze the trees into that release cause it's just gonna be so cute. But you know what? It's all here now. Got some Versamark, got some embossing powder. These are the basics. Let's start out with, oh, and I've got a piece of metallic cardstock somewhere because I'm gonna do my trunks that way. So let's get started with some die cutting. Actually, I forgot that I have to detab these. I have really been liking these Hero Arts snippers because they have a really pointy little end. So it makes it a little easier to get into some of the smaller spaces like that. And so if you're looking for some nippers that do get into the smaller ones, these might be a great fit for you. So I'll get these detabbed first and then it doesn't have to be done again. Gone ahead and cut some strips here and I'm gonna cut out my trees all at the same time. And you can see how you can get multiples. Now I want my center tree to be in the green. And here's the thing, you can, you can take whatever crop you like, right, from any of the plaids, just kind of, you know, move it around till you get what you're looking for. And this little guy too. And this would be cute with any pattern paper that's holiday themed, right? Or if you had like some nature themes, you could do that too. So let me cut out my first set of trees. All right, let's take a look at the cuteness. Gosh, they're just, they're so petite and cute. Now, I'm probably gonna be using, of course, the three different designs, but you wouldn't have to do that. You could repeat trees, right? But they are little guys, and the little plaid is so cute. Now, I am going to go ahead and off camera real quick, I'm gonna cut out some backing layers for my trees so that they have a little more stability. So let me do that and I'll also grab at the same time my gold cardstock. So now that I've got these little friends cut out, I'm gonna glue everything together with some liquid glue. And I just have a little scrap here because these little, <laughs> these are so delicate that I know I'm gonna get glue all over everything. So I'll, I'll do this off camera cause it's a little tedious. And uh, when I come back, I'm gonna have little tall skinny trunk tree stands and my wonky trees all glued together. So now we have our trees and here's the fun thing. You can take, depending on how much dimension that you added, let me grab a few thin foam squares, okay? And I'm gonna put a couple on here. I'm gonna put a couple, oh, I thought that had torn apart, on either side of where the little tree stand trunk thingy is gonna come because that way 
this will give you enough clearance for that tree. Now I think I want to try to support the top two as much as I can, so I'm going to make a very pointy little top cut like that. You can cut your strips to be whatever you need them to be, and this little guy is just going to help right up there. So I'm going to proceed with more foam this way. See, he can; these can be floating right over the top of the stands. <laughs> So let me get some more foam on. Then I can cut these based on how I want to arrange them on my card. These can be shorter, which is probably going to happen. So I'll get the foam on here and then we'll choose a greeting. There are so many sweet little greetings. I mean, honestly, even just a very minimal right onto the card would be cute with this, but I want to use one of the larger ones with the dies. So I think I'm going to do all is calm, all is bright. My favorite Christmas song makes me cry. It's so beautiful. But I think while I'm at it, maybe I'll also do a happy holidays in case I change my mind. All right. You know, it's always nice to have a couple extra greetings. All right, pick this up. I am going to prime this a little. I've stamped with the other one, but have not used this yet. Let's grab some anti-static powder. This will just help my powder to slide off. Although this is, I'm using Gina K Designs Heavy Base Weight White. It's a really nice, smooth cardstock. I really like her white cardstock. I'll have my Versamark embossing pad. We'll just ink our stamps up. Like that. Bring this down and then I will use my little Stampin' Bug pressure tool. Just helps me to glide and add nice even pressure as we transfer the ink. I think one time will be good. I'm going to grab my little paper catch for the embossing powder. Let me take a look here. Well, I can see it, so I think it's there. I've got my clothespin here, and I'm going to be using some Brutus Monroe Gilded Powder. Don't mind my paper catch. I stepped on it and got it kind of dirty. I think it'll still work. Oh, there's not a lot of space in here. I step on things because I throw a lot of things on the floor. All right. Let's see. Oh, that looks nice. Took the impressions really well. So we'll just let that sit for a second there. And I'll get my heat tool warmed up and we'll melt the powder. Right. That is some gold shiny goodness. All right. Let me grab the coordinating dies and I'll just go cut those out real quick off camera. All right. Pop out that greeting and that greeting. So I have two. I have two to choose from. I may change my mind. You never know. Never say never. I think I will cut out one more layer for each just to give these a little substantial ness. Actually, yeah, I think I'm going to do that. All right, let me do that, glue those together, and then we will start designing the layout of the card. I went ahead and prepped a green leaf cardstock note card because I thought that was a really nice, uh, oh, come here now, a really nice match for this particular pattern paper. And I trimmed it down this panel. Let's see, what size is this? Three and a quarter by four and a half. So I'm gonna have a nice generous margin of the green and I'm gonna get this tape off real quick and we'll pop this up. I spattered and it looks like I got a little far flung and got some onto the green note card, but you know what, I think that's okay. I don't think anyone's gonna notice and I will tell you this is kind of a cool tool. If you ever see something like that, you can take the Couture Creations tool and kind of like removing embossing powder, it'll take it right off because it just takes it off the surface. I didn't want the gold to extend over here. 
So that comes off really nicely, actually. I've been using this tool a lot lately because it, it really does. It's like, a, well, it's like a magic eraser. Okay, so what I went ahead and did is I added some extra height to these, the center tree. All right, and I think I'm going to go with a simple, all is calm, all is bright. But all I need to do here now is figure out the depth and height, because these can come up a bit like this of these because I do need to put in all of the tree stand bases. So for the center one, that can go, let's see here, up higher. And probably be right in there. And then these little guys will come under. I think I will place the greeting first and then that will show me where all the trees should go. All right, let's get the backers off. And I'll put a little liquid glue on here just so there's a little wiggle time. This is Connect Glue from Gina K Designs. And I think I said I put a little gold uh, spatter. I used my aqua pigment on that panel just to give it a little something extra. You know, just a little something extra. But I think that placement looks really good right there. Very simple. Those are thin foam squares, by the way. And now let's just place this guy, this guy, this tree. I like this because it's very, it feels very modern to me and minimal, modern and minimal. And sometimes I crave that look, right? Modern, minimal. All right, little float time here. And I'm not worried about, let's just get those completely out of the sight line right now. All I want to make sure that I do is get this tree basically in the center of this card from side to side. Yeah, that looks good. Press that down. Okay. And I might as well do these little trees while I'm at it because, again, these are just going to tuck right in. But of course, you know, if you did like a horizontal design, you could space them out nicely. I initially wasn't going to tuck them, but then I thought, you know what, I kind of like this. Kind of like the vibe, the vibe of the tuck under. And again, these are thin foam squares, and for the middle tree, I just doubled up the thin to give it a little more lift. All right, so we'll just, we'll just come right there with that tree. Drop it down. So think of all the fun patterns, papers you have, especially... Six by six pads tend to have more of a micro pattern than full size 12 by 12 sheets. But again, you could do that as well. You could make so many little trees and just kick out a whole mess of cards. I think this is a really versatile set with a good price point too. So let's tuck you maybe a little lower like that. I just want it basically to be the same from side to side. And I love that the plaids don't go in the same direction. And now what we're gonna do, let's place the center tree stand, okay? And I'll just, again, put my little dots of liquid glue. And because I left a little opening, it's going to give room for this to slide up. And I'm going to actually do it from the side because it's a little easier for me to see that way. And then when I drop this, oh, where's my little tool? Well, I don't have my tool. I can just nudge it over like that to the center and then press it as soon as I feel, oh, there's my tool. As soon as I feel I have it straight. And because I have that liquid glue, just gives me that little bit of float time. Isn't that cute? All right, now I just need to figure out how tall I want these stands to be. They, they could all be the same, or I could come up just a little more on each one. I actually think that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to snip off just a little of each. Like that, replace this one, because they don't all have to be perfect. Perfectly lined up. Oh, way too much. Just wipe it off and 
drag it to another place. And again, I'm going to do the same thing, turning this sideways. It's just a little easier for me to see the center. Slide that in like that. All right. And press. Oh, that is cute. <laughs> it's so cute. Oh, Kathy, I love making cards. All right. And the last one, let me just see how I want this one to be because I, until I go, I don't know. Do we want to do the same where we bring it up a little? I think so. Yep, I think so. But this one doesn't need to be cut because that can slide in very nicely. Again, get our liquid glue. And that one actually has a nice little dip in the in the center to help you see where the center is. That needs to shift a little like that. And I wanted it to be slightly off of that one there. So a little bit lower. Oh my goodness gracious. And that, my friends, is the finished card project. I think this is such a fun die set because there are so many things you can do with this little tree set, right? And again, I, I, I think, let me see if I can catch that shine of the spatter. It's so hard in these lights. You would think that it wouldn't be, but it's, oh, it's in there. Let me show you one more card and a tag that I created. I decided to do a single tree with just happiest of holidays. Again, that spatter shine on the, tr on the panel itself. I mean, look at how minimal that is. Ah, oh, I love it. And then I just made a simple gift tag that would be great to coordinate with a card and a package. And again, there's, there's that shiny spatter on here. And I, I just need to go sit down because the cuteness right now is overwhelming me. I hope this inspires you to check out this simple die set and the stamps. But again, if you have greetings at home already in your stash, you could take a pair of scissors and hand cut your own wonky trees and do similar designs with what you have on hand. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find links to all of the products I used in today's video in the YouTube description box. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, I'd love to have you. So hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss the next time I post. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Here are a few more fun holiday card ideas for you to check out. I'll see you in the thumbnails below.